In this video, I'm going to talk about the proof of the monotone convergence theorem. Let me recall the theorem. Consider a sequence of real numbers, an. The monotone convergence theorem says that if an is increasing and bounded above, then it is convergent. And if an is monotone increase, I'm sorry, if an is decreasing and bounded below, then it is also convergent. So, um, what does it mean by a n is increasing? Again, a sequence a n is increasing if a n is less than or equal to a n plus one for all n in n. That means a one is less than or equal to a two, a two is less than or equal to a three, and so on. And we say that a n is bounded above if a n is less than or equal to m for all n in n, where m is um, a real number, okay? And um, recall that a n converges to a real number alpha if um, for any epsilon greater than zero, there exists some n hat in n such that the absolute value of a n minus alpha is less than epsilon starting from that index, okay? So what does it mean by um, this condition. Okay, recall that for a real number x, the absolute value of x is less than beta if and only if x is strictly greater than minus beta and less than beta. Okay, so this condition, this condition can be written as a n minus alpha is strictly greater than minus epsilon and less than epsilon. So we can add alpha to both the sides of the inequality and get a n greater than alpha minus epsilon and less than alpha plus epsilon. So it means that now, no matter what epsilon greater than zero you take, we look at the open interval from alpha minus epsilon to alpha plus epsilon. Um, there exists some index n hat such that starting from that index, all a n's are this open interval, meaning that a n is strictly greater than alpha minus epsilon and less than alpha plus epsilon. So now I'm going to use a figure to illustrate the idea of the proof and then uh, we give the formal proof. Okay. So now because a1 is less than or equal to a2, a2 is less than or equal to a3, a3 is less than or equal to a4 and so on. So people may ask, where does a n converge to? Some people may say, so a n, because it's, it keeps increasing and it cannot be above some number, then it could converge to the largest element of a n, of the set consisting of all a n's. But the largest uh, element or the maximum of that set may not exist. Then um, we use a very similar concept that is called the supremum of the set or the least upper bound of the set presented in my video lectures on the supremum and the infimum. Okay, so um, the idea is as follows. We consider the set of, uh, consisting of all a n, where n runs in n, and let um, alpha, let alpha be the supremum of the set. And then we will try to use the definition of uh, convergence to show that um, a n converges to alpha. So um, now this is the formal proof of the monotone convergence theorem. For simplicity, we just consider the case where a n is monotone increasing and we consider the set a um, defined as follows. a is the set of all a n, where n runs in the set of all uh, natural numbers. Since a n is bounded above, the set a is bounded above. This set is also non-empty because a1 is in a, a2 is in a, and so on, okay? By the completeness ex axiom, because a n is, um, I'm sorry, because the set a is non-empty and bounded above, the supremum of a exists as a real number, so let alpha be the supremum of a, okay? Our goal is to show that the limit of a n as n approaches infinity is equal to alpha. And again, we are going to use the 
um, definition of convergence to accomplish um, this goal. So we are going to use a very important property of the supremum that is called the epsilon characterization of the supremum. So here this is a set A and alpha is the supremum of A. If we subtract a positive number epsilon from alpha, then this new number is strictly less than alpha. And alpha is the least upper bound. Anything that is strictly less than alpha cannot be an upper bound. So there must be some element A of A such that A is greater than alpha minus epsilon. And for sure it is less than or equal to alpha because alpha is an upper bound. Okay? So please um, watch my video lectures on, on the supremum and the infimum to um, know more about this property. Okay, so we take any epsilon greater than zero. There then is some element of A such that alpha minus epsilon is less than that element A. Okay, but A is in A, so it's one of the elements of the sequence. So say we uh, denote by uh, a n hat that element meaning that there exists some n hat in n such that alpha minus epsilon is strictly less than a n hat okay so n hat is here is an, an index that is a, a positive integer now by the monotonicity of a n alpha minus epsilon is strictly less than a n hat and it's less than or equal to a n whenever n is greater than or equal to n hat because the index is larger. Then from here we can see that alpha minus epsilon is strictly less than a n and it is less than or equal to alpha and it is less than alpha plus epsilon for all n that are greater than um, n hat. Okay, so the first part here is obtained from here because you know that alpha minus epsilon is strictly less than a n for all n that is greater than or equal to n hat. But how come the second part here is satisfied? a n is less than or equal to alpha. Why? Because alpha is an upper bound of this set. So every element of the set is less than or equal to alpha. In particular, a n is less than or equal to alpha whenever n is greater than or equal to n hat, okay? And for sure, alpha is strictly less than alpha plus epsilon, okay? Therefore, we will see that a n lies in between alpha minus epsilon and alpha plus epsilon for all n greater than or equal to n hat. So, the absolute value of a n minus alpha is strictly less than epsilon for all n greater than n hat. By the definition, limb of an as n approaches infinity is alpha.